the Lord. Feel free. Are you happy to be here? Yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I want you to be free wherever you are. I just want you to be free. I want you to focus on God right now. But you can close your eyes. I just want you to be comfortable. Free. You forget about your neighbor, you forget about who you came with. Just, just you and God. I just want you to focus on God. Focus on God because you have come to encounter God. Forget about anyone who is here. Just focus on why you came. You came to meet God.
prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Take your seats. St. Mary's. So today, everyone from St. Mary's, you're welcome. Thank you. You see, maybe that's why we don't recognize you. You're shy. All right. My sermon title is Touched but Not Changed. Touched but Not Changed. And um, the scripture reading is from the book of John, chapter number 14, verse 21 to 24. And it reads, He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my father will love him, and we will come to him, and our home we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word and the word which you hear is not mine, but the father's who sent me. It's amazing many of us say that we love God with our mouths, but when our hearts are far away from loving Him. Absent of Jesus, but you're present to the world. Touched, but not changed. Let's read John chapter number 15. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Sometimes the problem with people and loving others is because they love others as they love themselves. The problem being, many people do not love themselves. Sometimes how people treat others, that's the same way they behave to themselves. This is why the the new commandment which Christ Jesus gave. You can also I look at, um, at John um, 14 34, if I'm not mistaken. Um, John 13 34, yeah. Um, the interesting thing is, Jesus here tells us that we should love one another as he has loved us. 
So for you to love, for you to truly love, you have to experience His love. That's when you can love others. Your lack of love to people is because you have not experienced the love of God on your own. You need to experience the love of the Father. It goes on to say, uh, before I go there, let me go to uh, the scripture. John 13, uh, 34. It says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all we will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The church needs love and we need to love one another. We cannot be divided. We must, we must be together and united. We are serving one God. We must be united. We are the body of Christ. I'll continue from chapter 15. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. So meaning if you are disobeying God, you are not his friend, right? No longer do I call you servants. For a servant does not know what his master is doing. So the Lord wants you to move from servanthood to intimacy and relationship with Him so that you can be His friend, so that He can share to you the matters of His heart. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends for all things that I heard from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatever you ask the whatever you ask the father in my name he may give you these things i command you that you love one another you know we need to have the word of god in our hearts i love some 119 verse 11 Your word I have hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. Do you have his word in your heart? Do you have the word of God within you? Or are you lukewarm? It's amazing that the church today the church today Behaves like Judas is carried. You want love without covenant. You want love without covenant. It's amazing. You want to be associated with him, but you do not want to be committed to him. You want to be associated to him, but you don't want to be committed to him. Judas betrayed the son with a kiss. He betrayed the son of God with a intimacy without covenant. That's what many people want. You would rather you get saved, you are anointed, you speak in tongues, you heal people, all that. Yet, you are sinning. You are a liar. And for those that are married, commit adultery, sexual immorality. When you come to the front, we pray for you, you fall. You have been touched but not changed. You want to be in a relationship with God but no covenant. That is being a hypocrite. He 
he betrayed Jesus with a kiss on the cheek, just like Judas, you want to be seen as one that has intimacy with God, yet you do not want to be covenant with God. You do not want to be committed with God. You just want association, but not the man Christ Jesus. You must love Jesus. You must burn with Jesus. You must understand that you cannot preach a gospel that you do not believe. You must be consumed with zeal for his house. You must burn with zeal for his people. Zeal for God. You must know the price of a soul. How can you know if you do not love God? How can you want to change people when you are not transformed yourself? You, passion for Jesus, you, you must be filled with the zeal of God. When people see you, they must see Jesus. It's amazing that the Apostle Peter walked with Jesus for three and a half years. For about three and a half years, he saw Jesus feed the 5,000. He saw Jesus feed the 4,000. He saw Jesus walk on water. The miracles, he was there seeing. The deliverances, he was there. The healings, he was there. But this is the same man who denied the Son of God three times. Peter was touched but not changed. It is only when they were filled with the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost that they were transformed. Every man can make a speech but only the Holy Spirit can make a testimony. To you and when you allow him to transform him that is when you are transformed because the other disciples also ran away from Jesus but when they were in the upper room when the Holy Spirit came when they were filled with the Spirit they were changed men the same Peter who denied the Son of God three times is the same Peter who spoke to the church and 3,000 were awards of God. That is transformation. Change starts from within. Change begins with you. I can say as much, but if you cut out yourself from believing, do not permit you. Change begins with you. It is only the Spirit of God who can transform the heart of a man from hearts of stone to hearts of flesh. You must allow the Holy Spirit to transform you right now. Right here, right now. You have come to encounter the Lord. Yes, you speak in other tongues. You can prophesy. You can heal the sick. You will work miracles and much more. Yet you, you have been forgiveness in your heart. How can someone who's been spending time with God fail to forgive their brother, their sister? That is being a hypocrite. You have been touched by his anointing, but you have not let his glory change you. You have been touched, but you have not allowed God to change you. You have been touched, but you're not allowing him to change you. You must understand that forgiveness is not for the weak, because the weak cannot forgive. Forgiveness is for the strong. Beloved, it is not weakness to forgive, because only the strong forgive. You You are seen as great men and women of God. Great sons or daughters of God. Yet you are suffering with masturbation. You are suffering with pornography. 
you are suffering from sexual immorality, you are committing adultery with your husband or your wife, you are stealing from work, you are a big lie. I don't say this to condemn you, I say this that the Holy Spirit may convict you. Because God does not condemn, He convicts. He is the Spirit of Truth. You need to repent. You need to you need to be changed. You need to be changed. And change begins in the heart. Change begins in the heart. Your heart is representative of your spirit. Change begins with the heart. It is the mouth that you must confess and repent unto God to save you and change you. But it is with the heart that you believe, Romans 10. It is with the heart that you believe and it is with the mouth that you confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Do not be like the Pharisees that with your mouth you proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord while in your heart you are living in sin. No way, beloved. No way. That is not you. I'm speaking to a Joshua generation. I'm speaking to an apostolic generation. I'm speaking to a prophetic generation. I have brought the cry of the Father, the cry of the Son, and the cry of the Spirit. How much more shall the blood of Jesus be spent over you? How much more? It must pain you to see a sinner. It must hurt you. Until it hurts you, you will not think of changing it. It must hurt you. You must have love. You must be filled with love and compassion. You must have love. You must love God. You must know His Word. Many people want solutions to life like this and formulas. How can I know my identity? How can I know my calling? And many people expect me to give them answers when they ask me such. And, and I give them the least answer they expect. Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. Jesus is the, is the, the solution to all your problems. Amen. It is in knowing Jesus that you begin to know yourself. Your identity is in Him because you are in Christ. We are seated in Him in heavenly places. We were saved through Him. And the Father looks at you when he, when he sees Jesus. We are in Him. Therefore, for you to know yourself, it is by Him. Anything which does not look like Jesus, it is not you. Joshua, know who you are. You must know who you are. Change begins with the heart and shifts to the mind. It is only when you have been transformed by God that you can transform others. We are a chosen generation. We must transform others. We have no time. And we have no excuse to misrepresent God. We have no excuse to misrepresent God. It's amazing how the church is supposed to be Proverbs 31, but she look like Jezebel 31. It's amazing that when people look at you, they see Christians, but they don't see Christ. When people look at you, they can't tell the difference between the world and the church because you've lost your order. It's, it's shocking. It's shocking. And I'll talk about this, and people will not like this holiness. It's important. You say you're anointed, you're putting on something like this, short like this, and you want to stand, and you are saying that, no, I am anointed. You must understand that it is God who looks at the heart. It's man looks at the outside. We don't care how anointed you are. If you are dressing like Jezebel, they will chase you. You must represent Jesus well. Walk 
worthy of your calling. Yeah. It's amazing. Uh, it's amazing. You want to be associated with him, but when the sufferings in Christ come, you don't want. No, I don't want. But she, when it's about the glory, you want to be there. Yeah, they know us, they know us hypocrites. You must stop. It's a, I'm short. I'm short. I remember a certain dream vision I had. I was in this dream, I was seated. It was a dream. Then from there, it shifted into a vision. The heavens opened. And I saw something interesting. God the Father, I was looking up in the clouds, it was God the Father, then, and there was God the Son. So, I'm God the Son, was moving like a lion. Then, I saw something very distinct, which didn't make sense to me at that time. I saw, yeah, this is our dream. I saw God the Father crying. I was confused. I'm like, this is supposed to be Jesus crying, not, not the Father. I was confused and I was shocked and I was scared. I was like, oh no, this is bad. Then, on my other side, like, at the far end, there were youth people in the world, they were, they were partying. It was happening there. <laughs> then Jesus was moving in this direction. He, he was a man, but he was moving like a lion. He was moving. But if, before he told me what he told me about him, he told me I'm proud of him. I was like, okay, this is good, this is good. <laughs> I'm safe, I'm safe. Yeah. Then he told me, go and tell my people that I am coming. He was a lion because it is the lion who is coming, not the lamb. Do not miss the times and the seasons. Israel got it wrong. They're expecting a lion, but the lamb came. You're expecting the lamb, but it's, it is the lion coming. And he, took, he told me, tell my people that I love them. Tell my people that I love them. You know, God confuses me. Every time when I'm chatting with God, He always tells me, tell my people that I love them. And I'm like, don't they know that you love them? Then He tells me, no, they don't. Tell my people that I love them. And I'm like, there was a time when I was very upset. I was, I was angry. I was crying. Because Jesus was sad. So I was sad. Because he was sad. He's my friend. Yes, I was sad because God was sad. It hurt me that he was sad. And I was ready to judge the church at that time. I was like, God, 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 God. They can't do this to you, Jesus. They can't do this to you. Then he tells me, no. I love them. I'm like, they're hating you. I'm hating you. Then he was like, no. Tell them, I love them. I was like, what's wrong with this man? <laughs> they are breaking your heart. Then you are telling me to tell them that I love them. I was like, no. Then he told, and you know, the Holy Spirit now goes, the Holy Spirit is very um, interesting. Then he goes like, remember you were once like them. I was like, okay, okay. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, the forgiveness, God, okay, we shall forgive them. So, so I didn't speak any bad things against the church. I've been telling you people, he loves you and he wants to love through you. Amen. You are the bride of Christ. You know, as the church, the world must be wanting to be like us. Not us trying to be like them. But we are trying to bring the world into the church. When the church is supposed to follow us. 
like when the world is supposed to follow us. We must set the trends. We must set a standard. I love the story of Moses and the burning bush um, in Exodus. You never hear of that uh, encounter again in the Bible. Because Moses was the burning bush that carried God to Israel. You must become that burning bush that must carry the word of God to the nations, to your family, to Zambia, to the church. It must be you. You are that burning bush. You must burn. And let me tell you something very interesting about God. When you're not dying, like being consumed with the water, you burn, you burn you. Let me tell you this, the most, uh, the most dangerous thing is not the devil after you. It is when uh, I'm the man Christ Jesus is after you. How many have heard that unstoppable love? Try to stop his love and you wage a war. The interesting thing is when Jesus is after you, when he starts to pursue you, when he starts to pursue you, like for real, he's pursuing you. Anything that hinders love, he will break. Either it's a boyfriend you love, a girlfriend you love, your education, your work, your money, if it is hindering his love, it will move away, it will bend, it will be normal. He's a man of war. When he's after you, he's dangerous. <laughs> oh, you think, oh, you have no idea, that man. So when God is after you, be careful. Better set your life in order before he bends the things around you. Yeah. He's not only the God of mercy, but he's also the God of judgment. changes. You are Joshua, a Joshua generation. We are an apostolic, we are prophetic people. The church is very much apostolic and very much prophetic. You must know who you are. Where are the men like Elijah? Where are the intercessors? Where are your intercessors? Where are the watchmen? Where are the prophets? Where are the apostles who have actually been called to be that, not a Facebook name? I want people with actual callings, not you calling yourself. You know, I'm sick of tired of seeing the fake. I want to see the real. I want to see the authentic. God wants the best you you can ever be. Because he's got something special which only you can do. Which only you can do. Why don't be puppets and phonies? You must be the original. God has an original intent for you. You must fulfill it. Where are those who actually are hungry for God? In fact, in here, I can challenge you. In fact, all of you that you, that, that you need to fast for. In fact, I can say, I can probably say that I fast more than all of you combined. <laughs> Prayer and fasting is important. You must learn to fast. You must love to fast. Fasting is a discipline and it helps you not to gratify the desires of the flesh. You understand? Like, you know, today the Lord is moving Akan from our camp. Throw away your idols. If you are a witch or a satanist and you have come and you have idols, bring them here. Bring them here. <laughs> Man of God, careful. 
So throw away your idols. Get rid of what separates you from God. Allow God to consume anything in your heart that is hindering love. If there are physical idols that any of you have, bring them to the front. Simple as that. So, oh, I'm the other person. Beloved, I just want to tell you, you must burn with passion for God. You must burn. It's all about Jesus. You must burn. You must continue to take yourself to the altar. You must continue dying so that you can live in Him and through Him and by Him. You must have passion. You must have zeal for God. Be real. Don't be fake. I'm tired of the fake. I am tired of the fake. Too many fake people. It's too much. I'm tired and sick of that. I want believers who can have the character of Jesus. Yes, you prophesy. Even a witch can prophesy. Even a satanist can prophesy. But a satanist cannot live holy. A witch can be holy. And have the character of Jesus. We must set that standard. Believers must be discerning. There is no excuse for you not to do more than what Jesus did. Jesus only had a cross. How much more you? You have no excuse. He only had a cross. You have the Bible. You have the Old and the New Testament. You have no excuse. You have the Holy Spirit. Those people didn't have the Holy Spirit living in them. You have God Himself living in you. You have no excuse. You have no excuse. You must change. I love people very much. I love them because Jesus loves them. But I don't like you because I don't like your manners. <laughs> but I love you. Trust me, I do. I love you because God loves you. You are precious to Him. Do not be cheap. You are his beloved. God wants you to be his bride. You are a warrior bride. Warrior bride, arise. Arise, warrior bride. I want, arise. Arise, arise. You can stand to your feet as we wash.